Feel better? Nicole Fox and I have transitioned from the snow to the sun and traveled to our bug out off grid property in order to continue to plant the fruit tree orchard and garden. This week it's Fox's first birthday and we had a fun and humble celebration with friends we have nearby. Nicole made an amazing pineapple and watermelon cake for him with coconut cream on top. We've been living the yurt life in the Canadian wilderness for the past nine months and the tropical jungle surrounding Moe Uhane was closing in on us. First thing we had to do was get to work cleaning and landscaping while at the same time planting an orchard and garden and setting up camera and security systems that will grow and thrive as we return to Komorebi to build a formal house and turn our yurt into a guest cabin for visiting family. It's actually kind of soft, so we might be able to have a bite. You want a bite?
So one thing I've always wanted to do is like make my own peat moss, coconut core, things like that. And it's so cool that uh, coconuts grow here. Not only do we love to use the meat in all stages, whether it's the jelly stage or the mature hard meat stage, but we also love the water, the milk. And then we save all this stuff and um, I'll probably find a better way to do it in the future, but I just take these guys and toss them in the wood chipper behind and it just shoots out the fiber and combine it with soil and I have really uh, rich soil that retains moisture very well because the coconut core has that moisture retention spongy property. Okay, so I'm feeling super tired today and I need a little little wake me up. So I'm gonna go jump in the river even though it is kind of cold today and raining. Um, and the river is probably gonna be pretty chilly but it's gonna be like my cold dip training here in the tropics. So let's go, it's gonna be cold. Are you gonna jump in with me? No, I'm gonna jump in after I'm done working because I'm about to work. <laughs> so you jump in now, I'll jump in when I'm muddy. Okay. It's gonna be cold. Uh. The river gets so muddy after it rains. How's it looking today? It looks really good today. It looks kind of turquoise -y. Even though it's raining now, but it hasn't rained in a couple days, so. It looks really pretty. It looks perfect. Use the rope to get out of the water because we don't have like a dock or anything yet. So it's kind of tricky to get out. <laughs> oh, it feels cold. <laughs> oh, no. All right, let's do this. You're such a baby with the cold, but then so beast mode too. I know. I know it's like, I know. It's all a mind game, right? Puma could do it, I could do it. Should I use this paper bark as my towel? It's a big one. It's so impressive. I think if you came up to somebody and said, this is bark from a tree, they wouldn't believe you because it just doesn't look like bark. And it's really soft. It's like a scroll, like a Chinese scroll. Yeah, it feels like felt. All right, let's see it, jump in there, cool down. Okay, okay, okay. I got jobs to do. Pointing to you. Go, mom, go. Go, mom, go. So they're like my protectors. The sandals? Don't 
I was reading up on all the native crocodiles in the rivers in this part of the world and yeah. oh. oh what was that ah! Just kidding. <laughs> they could be out there any second no way yeah they love the freshwater rivers the blue wolves come on puma come on yeah. <laughs> look i think i see one floating in the river behind you Come on, Rose. So how's that? Nice. Feel better? Yeah, I feel awake. Oh, that was nice. Gotta get you ready for like triathlons. We can start uh, doing like two mile swims in here every day. <laughs> It'd be perfect for it. I think he's uh, worried about you. I'm okay. What does living off the grid mean to you? We'd be interested to know what you think in the comments below this video. For us, three of the most important aspects of living off the grid are shelter, water, and food. In each microclimate we live in, we strive to be the masters of the wild medicines and foods that surround us. We always try to plant fruit trees and a garden to supplement those wild foods with ones that we grow and cultivate. In addition, we feel it's very important to live near a water source, be it a river, a lake, or the ocean, because this is the true Garden of Eden. On this day, I'll be heading out with some of the local boys to continue learning about the fish, lobster, prawn, and other delicious edibles that exist in the oceans that surround us.
Local I was um, spear fishing with said that uh, this moo is one of his favorites for sashimi, but just freeze it for 24 hours first. So we do for salmon sashimi as well, you know. Mm. It's good. Yeah. If we had some sushi rice and some seaweed and just this fish on top, ooh. it's good. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. There you go. Okay, come on, let's go. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, good job. One more time. Zaiga. Okay, Zaiga. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Got distracted by mom. Okay. Let's go. Come here, Fox. Come on. La la la. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, Nikanshima. <laughs> Breathing just some coconut oil and uh, like paprika, garlic, sea salt, red clay, and dehydrated onion spice on there. Like a Sounds fish. delicious. Hey, is it ready? Yeah, I got you a couple of uh, off-grid plates here. Nice, <laughs> thanks. Eucalyptus sanded down.
All right, here's your lunch. Oh, thank you. Wow. This looks delicious. Dirty knees. I know, I was gardening and pulling weeds. <laughs> so first time trying the moo. Mmm, that's delicious. It's really good. Okay. Enjoy. Bye. Thank you. Hey, do we have anything for uh, dessert? Yeah, I have some of the coconut that I made. Wow. Let me know what you think. <laughs> hey, come It's a little too hard for him. Wow, just like popcorn. Yeah? Just like it. You like it? <laughs> he likes it. Thanks, thanks for the popcorn. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the fish. Mm. Hey, we have a couple friends in the area. Part of the reason why we moved to this uh, tropical location is we have a little community here of people we've met over the last you know decade or more. And one guy's um, passionate about gardening as well, and he's really into biochar. So he brought me a whole bag of the biochar that he cooks down. So I want to say thanks to Nate for this sweet hookup. Just search on my biochar. I don't want to tell you guys what it is, but. I think that uh, it's one of the secrets for making really healthy soil. You know, think about when a volcano erupts and or a forest burns. You know, after the burn, after the uh, lava comes down, that's the most healthy, fertile soil in the world. So I feel like all this biochar is full of, you know, beneficial, not just beneficial microbes, but, you know, the building blocks of beneficial microbes. And I think over time, as all the bugs and mycelium get in this hole, that I'm digging, they're gonna use that biochar to, to create amazing soil for this uh, miracle berry fruit tree I'm putting in here. So the hedge continues. So far I got curry, miracle berry, guava, Suriname cherry, coffee, and I'm thinking about putting some finger lime and some jabba de caba. If you guys have ever heard of Brazilian grape jabba de caba. So this hedge will be the uh, kind of the outer wall of the main garden so we have a fruit tree orchard and then we have the garden and both of these zones will feed us in this location it's starting to rain right now so i broke this hole up and i put some really good living locally made compost in here and some of my own compost some of the soil native soil and some of that biochar the biochar from Nate looks like this. Look, even roots got in there because I've had this bag for a few months and while I was gone, roots got in there. Puma, what do you think, bro? Biochar. You got my friend. Yeah. Yay. 